Hey there everyone, we are back with another Back to the Basics video. In this series I'm talking about things about Disney that seem like basics, but let me tell you, it is easy to forget some of these, so we're going back. We're going back to those basics and talking today about getting to Disney. Now what do I mean by getting to Disney? Well, I'm talking about everything from Hmm, I'd love to go to Walt Disney World this year. All the way to arriving at your resort and everything in between. Let's get to it. First things first, when do you go? Where do you stay? All those great questions I have answered in another video. You can find it right there today. We're talking about some more specifics. For example, should you book with a travel agent? It's a very good question that I've heard before. Should I book with a Disney travel agent? There are a lot of positives to it and no negatives that I can see. The reason is Disney builds the cost of travel agents into the price. So if a Disney planner on the phone, you know, call them or put booking online, if they book it, then it's the same price as if a travel agent books it. So the benefits, yeah, you can go travel agent or book it yourself, same price, same price. On that note, why would you want to use a Disney travel agent? Well, for some of us who love Disney and have been going for years, we have it down to a science. We know which fast passes we want on which day at which time, and then we're gonna kind of shape our reservations with dining and all these other things around all of that, and we know in our heads when the parade is and when the meet and greet best time will be. All those things we know from experience. If you're a first time Disney traveler, and you want to save yourself a little bit of the research, and I can totally understand my, why you might want to, because I am still learning, let me tell you, then I can see the benefits of an agent for you. On the flip side, if you prefer kind of being in control of what happens each and every day, and you've done a little bit of the homework by yourself, booking it by yourself, totally great option as well. Are there positives and negatives? Totally up to you, there is no cost difference. Disney travel agent, doing it yourself, no cost difference. Now skipping ahead a little bit because I don't want to repeat myself from other videos, let's talk about tickets and magic bands. The big question, constantly asked, should you get the park hopper option? Now this is a back to the basics video, so what does park hopper mean exactly? It means that you can use this ticket that you have on this one day to go to multiple parks on the same day. The four Disney theme parks, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, there are four of them. So with the park hopper ticket, you can go to different parks on the same day. With the standard base ticket, you can only go to one park each day. Obviously the advantage is being able to hop from park to park, but there is that travel time that you want to take into consideration. Even when we're talking about parks that are extremely close together and have three forms of transportation between them, Epcot and Hollywood Studios, walking, the boat, and the gondola, you still take at least 20 minutes to get between the two parks. Now, does that mean that I don't think you should get the park hopper ticket? Not at all. It comes down, in my opinion, to the number of days that you have. If you've scheduled enough time and enough days to go to every single park one day, for one full day, then I probably wouldn't get the park hopper ticket, simply because if it's your first, second, third trip, you want to experience as much as possible in each park. That's just me. On the flip side, if you don't have as many days, you can't go to each park and set an entire day up for each park, then I probably would recommend that park hopper so you can go from park to park, see the highlights of each one so you don't miss any of them. Now keep in mind, those are some of my general thoughts about it. Do I love having park hopper all the time? Yes, I do, because I love jumping between them. I love the transportation at Disney, but we're talking about the basics. We're talking about experiencing Disney for the first, second, maybe third time. Now what about those magic bands that you keep hearing about? It's a very good question. I've made a video all about magic bands, a Back to the Basics video. You can find it right there. They are super helpful. When you're staying at a Disney resort and buying tickets and everything, everyone in your traveling party who has a ticket gets a magic band. Having a specially designed magic band right there is great, but when you book a reservation, you do get a solid color magic band, including they come in a lot of very cool colors. The slider is not included with your reservation, but right there, I've got a purple one. I've got every color right there on the magic band chain. You can see kind of behind my computer. They're great. They kind of hang on to everything that you need at Walt Disney World. Your room key is right there. Your credit card for paying for things, if you so choose, also right there with a special pin to protect it, very important, and your entrance to the park, also right there. To get your included Magic Band with your reservation, all you have to do is link your reservation. So once you've made it, you link that reservation number to your My Disney Experience account. Now, what is a My Disney Experience account? Basically, it is the online system that Disney uses to keep track of what you're going to do on your vacation and your reservation. For example, you log into My Disney Experience with your username and password, 
create one if you haven't already. Put your reservation in there under Link My Reservation, and then right there it's going to ask you to get those Magic Bands. You can order them, choose your different colors, put different labels underneath so you know whose is whose in case you all have the same color as an example, which is always fun, and then you get them in the mail a few weeks before your vacation. The best part of the Magic Band is you get to keep it as a keepsake after your vacation is complete, which is great so that you can have a collection that you can use for years to come. And if you by chance purchase one of these specialty magic bands or you just have a solid color, you can use them year after year. There's no limit as long as the battery in there works and they have worked for years, so don't worry about it. They're gonna work for a long time. You can continue to link that magic band for the future. In addition to that, Disney has instituted a new program where you can get a specialty designed magic band instead of the solid color if you so choose for an additional fee. For example, these specialty ones right here cost anywhere between let's just say $20 and $35, somewhere in there. These are included with your reservation. If you want to upgrade to the specialty ones, they have this program now where if you have it with your reservation, you can upgrade at half the cost, maybe $10, $15, whatever it is, and the options are all available to you online under that My Disney Experience account. Now, once you've made it to this step, you're gonna think about what you're going to do each and every day, and every family has a different strategy for how they like to do this. There are some families who like to play it by ear and just say, you know what, we'll book a few fast passes, maybe, and then we'll just go and have a great time. And they love it, and that's not a bad way to be. There's no wrong way to experience Walt Disney World. There are other families, and my family used to be this way, where we'd kind of mark, you know, make a note of every single minute we were in the park, and we would go to the different attractions under those time constraints. That is, it, it's an interesting way to experience the park. I'm a little less formal about it now, even before I moved to the Orlando area, but I can tell you it is a strategy that some families use. I recommend somewhere in the middle, where you have each day kind of a general idea of what you want to do. You make those fast pass reservations in advance, and if you're not sure about fast passes, you can find my Back to the Basics video all about fast passes right there. You make those reservations, get some dining, and then make your way. You don't have to go by every single minute. Leave a little bit of flexibility in there just so that you can experience some of the magic and have a great time. Now, getting back to dining reservations, I do recommend them. There are some amazing restaurants at Walt Disney World, and I have so many videos on my channel. All all about dining, go refer to those. They're gonna help you a lot when you're thinking about some of those specialty dinings. There are, of course, theme park food. Burgers, fries, they have that, it's available. But if you're looking for a steak, or a special buffet, or meeting with characters for breakfast, you don't wanna miss some of the specialty dining at Disney. It is fantastic. Now, I do wanna to touch back on the online accounts. It's very important that every single person in your family is accounted for on that My Disney Experience account, whether they create their own account and they link it to yours, or you kind of create it underneath yours if it's a child, no problem, as long as it's in the system, right there, they have their magic bands linked to that My Disney Experience account, you'll be able to kind of book everyone's fast passes at the same time, get dining for everyone at the same time, and most importantly, get on some of those virtual queues, like Rise of the Resistance together. And there are some really good strategies for getting those virtual queue spots, but it's gonna take being on the same My Disney Experience account together. You can find more information about that and more videos on my channel. Now there is a question I wanna answer that I've been asked about this topic. Special events, should I go? Should I pay for these special events? Are they worth it? Very good question. Again, I'd refer to you to other videos on my channel where I go to some of these special events. They are amazing, amazing. Mickey's Not So Scary, Very Merry Villains After Hours, Moonlight Events, Early Morning Magic. There are some unbelievably magical events at Walt Disney World, but I personally think it comes down to each family and thinking about that budget. What do you want to see? What do you want to experience? What is important to you? Go do the research, think about, think about what you would enjoy most as a family. I think it's too specific of a question for me to answer. All I can do is show you what is available and then I think picking what's best for you is the way to go. Last but not least, let's talk about Disney's Magical Express. What is Disney's Magical Express? Well, it is the transportation system that Disney has using the Mears Company buses, these very large buses, to transport guests who are staying at the resort hotels from Orlando International Airport to their resort hotel, Pop Century, Art of Animation, Animal Kingdom Lodge, Beach Club, Yacht Club, it will drop you right in front of your hotel. No need to worry, it will even take care of the bags for you. So how does it work? Well, when you make your reservation, all you have to do is indicate that you would like to use Disney's Magical Express. They're going to ask you right when you book if you have the flight information for your trip. You do not have to have it in advance, you don't. You just tell them that you would like to have Magical Express, you're not sure about the flights yet, 
and then you'll call them back later. And you can do that. Or you have the reservation with you, link it all together, and they'll know exactly which flight you're coming in on and which flight you're going out on. After you've made that reservation with Disney's Magical Express, and they have a separate number linked in the description of this video, you get special yellow tags in the mail a few days before your vacation. These yellow tags are very important. You put them on your bag when you go to the airport where you're coming from. Let's say you're going from BWI at Baltimore to Orlando International Airport. I have a yellow tag on my bag. I kind of put it on the bag and then I send it as a piece of luggage. And then when I get to Orlando International Airport, I don't go to luggage claim. I, I don't, I don't go to luggage claim at all. Disney's Magical Express picks it up before it even arrives on that carousel going around Orlando International Airport. I just go straight for the Magical Express buses on the ground level of Orlando International Airport. They tell me which line to go to. They touch my magic band. I head in line, get on the bus, go to my resort, check and have a great time. And the night, that night, that same night, my baggage will appear in my resort room. The best part of Magical Express, in my opinion, it's included with your vacation. So you don't have to worry about luggage at all. You put that yellow tag on. Send it through, before you know it, it magically appears in your resort room. Now, one word of advice. If you are arriving on a flight late in the evening, or you know there's something that you really want from your bag the moment you land, do not use the Magical Express with that yellow tag. All you have to do is leave the yellow tag off, go to baggage claim, grab your luggage, and bring it to the lines for Magical Express. They can take your luggage underneath the bus. It just means that it'll arrive the moment you do because you have it with you. Otherwise, it does take a few hours to get to you. Disney's Magical Express doesn't just drop you off. Of course, it brings you back to the airport, no charge at all, and you can use the luggage service that they have going the other way as well. At every resort, there are luggage handlers from the airport standing by. They don't work directly for Disney. They work for the airport, and they take your luggage from the resort all the way to the carousel at your future, your home airport. So Baltimore, for example, the luggage I drop off at the Pop Century luggage area. And I don't see it again until the carousel in Baltimore. The reason for that is they kind of transport it all the way for you, totally included. You do want to tip those uh, sky caps. They're very good at what they do. You can take the Magical Express without worrying about luggage. It's a great, great way to experience more of the magic as you're making your way home. I sure hope you found this video helpful and informative. Back to the basics, getting to Disney. Let me know if you have any other tips and tricks in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for being a part of the magic with me today. Until next time, have a magical day.